Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to another episode of Shoots with Coops. I'm sorry I've been away for so long. Lots of things have happened. Finally got married to the beautiful Emily who's behind the camera. But today I want to talk about my latest find and a cult camera that people really, really admire and have a lot of good things to say about. That is the Nikon 35, sorry, L35 AF. Now this is a 35mm point and shoot film camera from 1983, so it is quite old and you can definitely tell by the you know, very old styling. I mean, it, it looks like an 80s brick. I think it looks cool, but it's definitely an older camera. Now, the reason why people really, really love this camera and it is pretty much because of the lens on here. This comes with an extremely sharp and contrasty 35mm 2.8 lens. And in today's market where to get yourself a 35mm point and shoot with the 35 2.8, you're looking at spending upwards of $800 on the Contax T2, T3. Even the Yashica T series are becoming very, very expensive. So I've heard a lot of good things about this camera. I have put one, through, uh, one roll through it to check that the camera was working and I was very impressed. Uh, it didn't shoot anything that amazing, I just wanted to test the camera. But today, uh, we are out in the city, I'm gonna shoot a roll of Ilford FP4 push to 400, my favorite black and white film. And we are gonna put this camera through its paces because from what I've read and what I've seen myself, it really has a fantastic lens and it's an amazing performer. But we'll talk more about that later. For now, let's head out on the streets and start shooting. Alright guys, so I hope you enjoyed those photos. I have also shot two rolls of Fuji C200 uh, with this camera, so I'll show you those photos now. Enjoy! So guys, this camera, it's a fantastic cheap point and shoot. When you, you know, have got the likes of the Contax T2, really, really expensive um, cameras, you know, like the Contax, or you've got the Fuji Natura with that 24 1.9 lens, they're all getting up to the eight, nine, a thousand dollar mark, um, Australian, I should say. And it's just too expensive for a camera that could break at any moment. Um, and, just even repairs, guys. I mean, outside of Japan, you'd be struggling to find someone who could repair it properly, um, and then parts becomes an issue as well. So I really think that if you want a compact, you should be looking at a cheaper option, something that, you know, if it does break down, because, you know, even this camera, guys, will break down soon. It's over 40 years old now. It's not going to last forever. But I think if you can find one at a cheap price that performs really well, it's just a win. The 35mm lens on this camera is very, very sharp. Like I said, max aperture of 2.8. It's got very, very punchy, contrasty images. Uh, there is a slight vignette um, at the wider apertures, and you can probably see that on some of the photos, but I can live with it, uh, especially because I mostly shoot black and white uh, through 35mm cameras. The vignette doesn't bother me so much. Uh, but the colors, like you would have seen from the, the Fuji C200 um, shots, 
lovely colors, uh, very, very sharp. It's just a wicked 35 mil lens. 35, in my opinion, is, is what you want on a compact or a 28 because the nature of the compact camera, you know, the point and shoot is to carry around with you every day, document life, what, you know, all your goings on and happenings throughout the day. Uh, so a wider lens is generally better. I think if, you know, the 40 mil would, would be my limit. I don't think anything more than a 40, like a lot of those cameras had that 38 lens on there. Anything more I think wouldn't be that great. Now, as great as the camera is, guys, uh, and the lens on this is fantastic, there are two problems with the camera and areas where it should break, I should say, that you should know about. One, the battery door on this camera sucks, guys. It's made out of cheap, flimsy plastic. It just looks like it wants to break. You know, you look at it and it looks like it wants to break. So like what I did on mine, uh, even though mine is in good nick, I put uh, some gaffers tape on it just to make sure that I don't knock it or hit it and break it. Second, guys, the shutter button. Now, it has a very long travel on this camera. You pretty much have to push the shutter button through the body of the camera to engage the shutter. Uh, and that's uh, definitely a very, very known and documented uh, part of this camera that breaks. I bought one of these off eBay for 20 bucks about four years ago. And when I got it, I pressed it twice and then the shutter button just seized up on me and it died. So definitely be wary of that and check that before you buy one. One notable cool feature of this camera, guys, is on the front of the lens, you have a filter thread, which is great. You know, polarizers, ND, um, or colored filters for your black and white photography. But even more notable on the front of the camera, there's a little lever and that lever gives you two stops of exposure compensation, which is perfect uh, when you're shooting backlit. Um, and the point and shoot cameras, you know, obviously you don't have any control over your shutter speed. So having that little dial there to give you two stops of compensation, uh, it's definitely pretty nifty and it does help. There's really not much else to say about this camera, guys. I mean, it is, it's an 80s brick. Uh, it looks like it's from the 80s, but I actually really like the design. I think it's pretty cool, pretty retro, um, you know, Definitely a bit of fun to look at and it's fun to shoot guys. Essentially, it's a fun little camera. It's really, really easy to use. It takes fantastic images. If you can find one at a cheap price like I did, I definitely recommend buying it because even though compacts are all gonna die eventually, if you get a really good one like this for cheap, you can have a lot of fun with it before that day comes and hey, you might get lucky and it just might not break. But I have a love-hate relationship with you know point and shoot compacts guys. They're a lot of money for what they are, um, and and the prices just keep going up from what I can see every day. And I just think that when you want to, you know, to get a, a premium one, uh, you got to spend so much money. And there's just that niggle. Where I just can't understand how people can push the button on it when it's a camera that could just break at any moment. Can't get it repaired probably outside of anywhere but Japan. Parts don't exist anymore. Uh, which is why I think this camera, the 35AF, is such a great little camera because they can be had for practically dirt cheap compared to these other premiums. They still have that max aperture 2.8 lens, sharp contrast to images. That's it. You can't ask for more from a point and shoot. So I hope you enjoyed this episode, guys. Lastly, I just want to apologize to all you loyal subscribers out there. So many of you have reached out uh, on my Instagram and, you know, hey, Coop, when's the next video coming? Uh, like I said at the beginning of this, me and Em got married, so there was a lot of planning and screwing around with the wedding and all that sort of stuff. So that's all done and dusted behind us now. So now I have the time to make more YouTube videos. So stay tuned because the next video will be on my beautiful Hasselblad, which I've been having a whole lot of fun lately with. And if you've been following me on Instagram, I've been posting some amazing uh, images that this camera puts out. So definitely stay tuned if you wanna see that. That'll be coming up next. As always guys, happy shooting, and I'll see you in the next video.